Hi folks, this video documents a project in which a vintage four-string tenor banjo is being converted to a five-string banjo. Essentially, a new neck is going to be crafted and fitted to the original pot assembly. And for this work, I have commissioned Mark Hickler of Hickler Banjos in Arizona. So in this video, we're going to see three parts. The before, which will take a look at the original tenor. The during, which will document the process of making and fitting the new neck. And then after, where we'll have a look at the finished five-string banjo. So let's start with the before. I've acquired this Vega style M tenor banjo that dates to about 1920 or 21 based on the number that's stamped into the dowel stick. You can see it there as well as on the inside of the rim. The same number uh, dates the banjo. So it's about 100 years old. Style M tenor banjos made by Vega are uh, distinguished by having a tuba phone tone ring and then also the uh, the bracket band that was designed by David Day and fitted to White Lady and uh, tuba foam banjos as well as uh, the style and banjos. The tenor neck is a very short scale. It's only 17 frets and I think the scale length is about 20 inches. And as far as I can tell, the banjo is pretty much all original. There's one tension hook that is mismatched. It's an old cobra head tension hook. I'll replace that later. But overall, it looks original. Uh, it's in really good condition. I uh, would add that the head on this banjo is a Joseph Rogers Jr. head. If you can look here, right there, you can still see very faintly the Joseph Rogers signature. It's fading away, but it's still there. So there's a good chance this is the original head on the banjo. I have a strong preference for skin head, so I'm really excited that I found an old tenor that still has the original Rogers skin head on it. It has the original friction tuners on it with the Ivoroid tuner buttons. Both the rim and the neck are unstained maple and faux tortoiseshell binding on the outside of the rim as well as on the inside of the rim. The rim is a 10 and 3 quarters inch diameter, which is exactly the same as my white lady. So that's kind of cool that I'll have uh, matching rim diameters. Unlike the white lady, it's a half inch thick rim. The, the white lady is much thinner. The fretboard inlays are pretty basic, standard for the period. This appeared on the style M's and a lot of the uh, the base model tuba phones and the headstock inlay is not the fancy flower pot inlay but the imperial torch inlay which is much more understated and I, I like it and speaking of the conversion neck it'll pretty much be a replica of this original tenor neck only in a, a five string design with a couple of exceptions and let's take a look at a schematic here that uh, was prepared by mark hickler the neck is going to have 22 frets rather than 17 so it'll be a full scale length of 25 and 5 eighths inches just the same as my white lady also the the tuners will be not these friction tuners but modern geared tuners it amazes me how anyone was able to tune one of these short scale length banjos with friction tuners they are very very touchy uh, not easy to work with and as i said the inlays on both the neck and the headstock will be the same. Well, the tone of the banjo is classic tubaphone tone. It's loud, it's full, and it has a very growly four string here. I'm not a tenor banjo player at all. I just know a few chords, and I think I have this in the Irish tuning. So I'll just throw a few chords here to give you a sense of what the sound is. And when we get to the after video, when I have the finished five string, I'll play a tune or two, and we'll get a real sense of how this thing sounds. Here we go. You can hear that low end is coming through and I'm not hitting the strings very hard at all. And there's plenty of projection, plenty of presence. Really like the tone on this. I think it's going to make an excellent five string tuba phone conversion. There's the before part. Up next will be some imagery from Mark Hickler that will show the neck crafting process.
well, here's the banjo back in my hands. And true confession, I've actually had it for several months. I've just been playing it so much that I haven't been able to sit myself down and make the final leg of this video. So today I'm finally getting around to it and putting it up on YouTube. Let's take a look at some of the features of the neck, uh, take a close-up look through it. So I'll kind of give you a, a walking, talking tour of that. And then I'll describe uh, the current setup that I have with it. Since I've had it, I've messed around with the setup quite a bit, as I tend to do with my banjos. Mark said that uh, it'd take about two months to complete this project, and that's exactly what it took. So he delivered on time, and everything was done according to the specifications that we laid out at the beginning of the project. So I really couldn't be more happy with the work that Mark did and how this banjo is feeling and playing and uh, holding up. Anyway, let's get to it. Let's take a look, starting at the headstock. Uh, again, uh, the idea was to basically replicate the, the tenor banjo with a five-string neck that was a full 22 frets instead of uh, just 17 frets. And uh, the headstock design is the classic Vega design, imperial torch inlay, uh, ebony overlay on the headstock, nut width is an inch and a quarter, and then ebony fingerboard with the, the same inlay designs as on the original tenor banjo. Ivory Ray binding on the sides with the ebony underlay. And the neck is just unstained maple with a satin finish. The tuners are Goto uh, geared tuners, modern tuners, so we replace those friction tuners and uh, nice pearlite or pearlescent buttons. Same thing with the fifth string tuner, Goto fifth string tuner. And looking at the back, we've got ebony heel cap and then the ebony centerline strip, just like the original. One thing different about this neck, it does have a truss rod in it. It's uh, accessible through the heel of the banjo. Originals didn't, uh, but uh, I opted for putting a truss rod in this as well. So that's the one big difference uh, compared to the old original vintage neck. If you look at the back of the banjo, we use the original dowel stick from the Style M tenor banjo. That yellow tape there isn't holding together a crack or anything like that. I just put that tape on there because I do have a pie plate resonator that I put on uh, the banjo sometimes, and that just protects the dowel stick from the, the, the hardware that holds the uh, pie plate on there. So that's just a protective piece of tape. Otherwise, the rim assembly is all the same as the original. Nothing has really changed there. The bracket band, the tubophone tone ring, all the hardware is the same, et cetera, et cetera. The setup features, if you look at the tailpiece, I've got a no knot on here. The original tenor had a no knot on. Of course, I swapped that four string tailpiece for a five string, put that on here. I did have a Kirshner tailpiece on here for a while, a big, long, much more massive tailpiece, and a lot of old tube phones had those kind of tailpieces. I liked it for a while. Uh, it seemed to uh, take out a few overtones, but I, I think it lost some of the, the tone on the low end. So uh, not long ago, I went back to the no-knot tailpiece, and I've been happy with that uh, ever since. So a month from now, who knows? I might have the Kirshner back on or something else. I don't know. I'm always messing around with that stuff. The bridge is a Purcell bridge, modern Purcell bridge that I had custom made. I think it's a 916, yeah, 916 bridge, uh, ebony topped, uh, maple three-footer from some special wood that he got some from some old flooring somewhere. It's got really great tone qualities. And actually, um, I have these Purcell bridges on a couple other bandages. I'm really, really uh, pleased with uh, how they work. Got light gauge strings on here. That's what I typically use. And the action at the 12th fret is about, from the top of the fret to the strings, is about an eighth of an inch. I know some claw hammer players like it a little higher than that. I, I That's a sweet spot for me because I play claw hammer and picking styles as well. So it works out for me in, in all those different styles. Oh, the head. Long story to the head. So right now, there's a Renaissance head on here. I just recently put this on. Going back to the before video, the tenor that as it arrived to me had an old Joseph Rogers Jr. calfskin head on it that I thought was pretty cool. And uh, as I said, I really like skin heads. 
I was hoping that that was going to be a usable head. But when <clears throat> Mark took the banjo apart, he found a lot of little tears under the tension hoop. So it, it really had to be replaced. And he put a very thin skin head on it originally. And that's what you saw in the videos that was being made and also the, the video of him playing the banjo. It came to me with that. And it was a great sounding head, really liked it. Just a lot of tone. And uh, unfortunately that head cracked during our dry winter here. And I had to replace it. And Mark sent me some new heads that I mounted and they were working great. But then we had a very humid summer here. El Nino came in, brought a lot of rain to Colorado, kind of an unusual summer. And the heads just kept stretching and stretching. And eventually uh, the flesh hoop got way too close to the bottom of the notch and, and the uh, heel of the neck. So had to replace that. And uh, I tried a fiber skin head for a while. It was okay. I'm not a big fan of fiber skin. I, I know they work good on some banjos. It was okay on here, but it, it, the tone was more muted than I liked. So uh, just recently, I put a Renaissance head on just to see if that's working. And I, I'm okay with it right now. I think it's a kind of a nice compromise between having a nice skin head versus, say, a frosted Remo type head, which, by the way, I tried that on here and I didn't like it at all. Um, it was just way, way, way too bright for this banjo, or at least my, my tonal preferences. So uh, the Renaissance head seems to be working as a nice compromise between a skin head and a typical uh, frosted plastic head. And I've got it tensioned up to about 90 on the drum dial, so it's, it's, it's pretty tight. And what I did here at the end of this, uh, I recorded songs, or I should say tunes really, both with this Renaissance head and then the same tunes playing this with the, uh, the skin head still on it. So you can hear uh, both heads on this banjo and, and see what you think about it. So that's the head story. That's about it. Again, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I think Mark did really, really fine work on this and did it in an amazingly short period of time. So that's about it. Hopefully, uh, you know, you watching this video, you learned something about the, the process of converting an old vintage tenor to a five string banjo. It's kind of a, a popular thing to do these days is you get these old tenors from the 20s and 30s and turn them into five strings. You just have to find yourself a good luthier to do that. Or if you have the skills, do it yourself but it can produce a really, really fine banjo. Anyway, with all that, let's hear what this thing sounds like. So again, I'm gonna play three different tunes. Each time I'll play it with the skin head and then the Renaissance head. And I'm gonna play in claw hammer, two finger style, and three finger style without picks so you can hear the banjo played in different styles. All right, thanks for watching this and hope you enjoy the music coming up here. Thank you.